Okay, so hi, um, my name's Ava Jabbar. I'm founder of Her Visions. Um, I'm also the co-curator and co-commissioner on the Augmented Reality Initiative called Open Space with the Photographers Gallery. Um, I'm really happy to be chatting to uh, Georgia James uh, this evening about um, her project that she's done for the Young Artists um, Program, which is part of the Open Space Initiative, um, which is which has all been um, generously funded by the Arts Council. Um, so, Georgia, welcome. Um, nice Thank to you. see you. Hi. Um, so you're going to be talking, or we're going to be chatting a little bit about your project, um, Garden of Alawan. Um, yeah. So maybe you want to start with talking a little bit about the title. Cool. So. Uh, basically, it's it's a AR sort of virtual greenhouse walk through space. Um, it's called Garden of Elowan because it's based on this really weird but cool project that I think MIT did, and it's a plant robot hybrid called Elowan, and it's it's like a real thing. It's like a a house plant that's attached to a a computer sort of mechanism, and it it sort of connects with the electrodes and then it makes the plant move towards light so it's like this combination of nature and technology which I thought was really interesting um, mm -hmm. and yeah so the, the actual work itself is based on the concept of speculative evolution and sort of how technology and nature are sort of evolving together and becoming one so that's yeah yeah I love that kind of uh the way that you kind of shift between sort of technology and nature and art um i think um yeah as a sort of cybernetic life form kind of um housed in this sort of greenhouse i guess what what was the sort of like how would you sort of recommend people experience uh the augmented reality or the filter so it's lots of different components, isn't there? We've got you've got the hybrid robotic plants and <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of the scale and the sheer scale of the sort of greenhouse that you've created as well. Yeah, so it's I made it with Adobe Aero, and so it's like a you need a screen to walk through it yourself. So I think an, an iPad is the best way to use it because then you've got a bigger screen and you can sort of see more things. But it also works on a phone as well so you have to get the app and it's like a link and you can sort of open your camera and it's it's like a like a installation so when you open the camera you can see the greenhouse and then you can like physically walk around it um yeah but i think also the space that you view it in makes a difference as well because obviously you can see like if i did it now i'd just be in my room and it would look a bit out of place but somewhere like a, a park maybe or a, a woods I think would be the best sort of place like an outdoor natural space with lots of greenery around I think it's a really cool like juxtaposition almost of like digital plants and real plants it's yeah that's that's how I'd recommend anyway and what what do you think drew you to this kind of like cyborg botany um, I think it's it's something I've always been interested in. It's like the idea of evolution and like how how we as humans will evolve next. Because and also actually where I've I've sort of grown up with seeing internet come into our lives. Like I I think I had my first phone when I was like twelve. So I've sort of seen the introduction of that and then mm. sort of thinking how much that can change the course of how we live our lives sort of thing mm -hmm. and then so like having that in the back of my mind and then being able to think ahead or just imagine what the future is going to hold like how how crazy it can change with technology and what it can sort of do so it's thinking about ways that that might go in the future and I don't know just lots of imagination <laughs> Yeah, I guess, I mean, and also like with this sort of like, there's an increase in involvement of like technology um, being incorporated into our lives and into nature as well, back into nature. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, how do you, 
how how do you see this sort of this evolving further um there's so many ways i think um i think the plants will get crazier <laughs> i'd like to <laughs> i don't know i mean i think it's sort of like for example that where Al elawan is a like they've literally taken computers and plants and sort of mashed them together but i think it's really interesting to think of how and this was an mit project for people that um aren't familiar uh with this project so it's something they can have a google and read into but like you said it is it's a real thing that yeah. the mit have created so yeah yeah it's really interesting mm. crazy but interesting mm. but yeah i think um i just i think the idea of like evolution human evolution is sort of going uh, what's what's the phrase uh like haptic technology is that the right phrase where it's sort of human embedded tech so sort yeah of, well, it's, where it's sort of it's yeah it's I it's kind of definitely more tactile and more yeah. re reactionary to or and integrated into kind of our senses i guess yeah. um so i think so you feel like it will be we're going to be more in tune with those plants or with with how technology is integrated into those uh, uh, settings or I guess a mixture of, of yeah. both. Yeah, a mixture, I think. Hmm. Yeah. And then I think it's quite interesting because that, I guess that sort of leads on to like the textures that you've actually used when you're talking about this sort of haptic quality um, or and these kind of like that sensorium of, of mm. uh, of um how someone is going to experience the filter within you know depending on the space that they're in mm -hmm. um do you want to just tell us a little bit about um yeah the actual like um textures of the plant leaves and how they were made um and how you found like using ar as a tool to think about um and augment the sort of what is considered visible as well within the within the artwork and then the sort of hybrid plants that you created. Mm -hmm. So I think the first step was the, the textures themselves. So I worked with a, an artist called Melissa Fisher and she's a, she works with like my microscopy. So I did a, a little workshop with her and she showed me how to use microscopes to take photos of like plant cells, which was, super cool like super interesting so we went we went sort of foraging for some wildflowers and brought them back and you sort of put them under the microscope and then you can see like the actual cells themselves so i wanted to get this sort of layer of or like finding sort of data and information from real plants like the real world sort of thing and mm. then input that into this new like digital virtual thing mm. um so then with the with the microscope photos I then worked with Boxcat Studio, who are like an animation studio. And then we layered these into 3D rendered plants. So it's sort of bringing the 2D photos into like a 3D space. Mm -hmm. And then that's what you see in the AR piece as well. It's like a whole process. Yeah, it's fascinating. It was like, it was such a joy to kind of um, see, see that sort of um, process uh, come alive. Um, and I guess with the with the augmented reality as a, as a tool for like considering what is visible or what's considered visible, uh, I think it's it's a really it's an it's it's a really interesting um, sort of I guess output of how you approached um, creating the textures because you've created something that's invisible to make it visible through these microscopic photos um, that you um, managed to take and then create and then also made that visible through the augmented reality and sort of that layering and texturing of the space I think is 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 really is really interesting I just wondered if you had any um, more thoughts on that or anything else that you wanted to add um, add to that 
Yeah, I, I think one of the main things that I sort of drew me to the idea of AR is like being able to layer different elements together and sort of you can almost pick and choose what you want to use. So like I could I could do an illustration or like a design something in Photoshop and then put it into an AR space and then it's sort of bringing all of these different elements together. And I think that's what's really interesting. It's because you sort of there's not really limits on to what you can do with it. It's sort of up to whatever, like whatever you want to do or like how far you want to take it. I think that's I think that's really exciting. And then I guess, uh, I mean, maybe you've covered it a bit, but I guess why do you think it was important to use photography or these microscopic uh, photographs? I mean, I think we covered it a little bit, but um, as the as the texture of, of the plants. So it's yeah. almost like this kind of like you're making these kind of micro macro um, co like correlations or, or connections. Yeah, definitely. I think I think the main thing was wanting to bring some element of real like physical plants into a digital greenhouse space. So it's like taking something that already exists physically and then being able to put that into some new in-between space. I think that was the main thing. But then also like the idea of playing with dimensions and bringing 2D into 3D and then making that visible like in your direct surroundings. It's just really interesting. Mm. Yeah, being able, I guess, to, um, yeah, sort of create these kind of like microclimates Mm. Or, or yeah where you would like them to be and I guess that's I guess that sort of leads on to like why do you think you wanted to make a greenhouse <laughs> I think I think it's like the ultimate symbol of nature and plants I think so it was sort of it's sort of the first thing I thought of when I thought of how do can I make man, man-made nature and plants do you think that's something because there's something to me that feels quite sort of constructed um and yeah. sort of artificial around this kind of idea of a, of a greenhouse yeah yeah it's interesting as well because it's sort of the idea of like having a a controlled environment or like a controlled space whereas mm. you usually think of that sort of thing as like wild like wildflowers but mm. how how we control that as humans and how we sort of like to put things in one space and organize it here and there but yeah that's interesting mm -hmm. yeah it's funny that you see that as a sort of symbol of sort of like nature and I just wondered just maybe is is that yeah I guess this kind of like idea of being able to sort of nurture something but under sort of controlled circumstances I just wondered yeah was there was there something some other reference there Georgia <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there should be. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, I also wanted to sort of like the, the style of the actual greenhouse itself, it's sort of a bit sci-fi inspired and I wanted it to be sort of a kind of spaceshipy, spaceshipy yeah. aesthetic. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. it's sort of like, an, it's not completely like a normal greenhouse. I sort of wanted to think of it as something a bit, a bit less constructed or a bit less like earthly if that makes sense <laughs> so it's, yeah. yeah it's more inspired by science and space and things like outside of earth mm. and then I guess with the um sort of how you sort of approached making the sort of the greenhouse and like making this whole kind of augmented reality, like this whole dimension, other dimension that house um, houses these kind of hybrid robotic plants and and the, this kind of like spaceship like greenhouse. Um, do you was there a different way that you felt that you approached the artwork using augmented reality? Um, yeah, I think, I think I was able to, so having like the end result sort of already in mind, like knowing how I wanted it to be 
viewed to begin with I think had a a big impact on the way I went about it because like, it's it's not something I'd done before at all so I sort of had to be really precise and like have a plan of what I was doing so I'd actually know if it was possible beforehand mm-hmm. and I think having that like being super organized and clear with what I actually wanted it to look like sort of helped me along the way because it's sort of like usually I'm just sort of if I'm starting a project I'll just take photos and see what comes from that but I think the process was a bit different this time because it was sort of seeing the end result first and then sort of going backwards Mm. so it, it yeah it sort of helped me be a lot more focused and sort of forward thinking I think Mm. so yeah so this idea of kind of like it like sort of working backwards and being Mm. able to sort of I guess have a target to work the kind Mm. of artwork that you wanted to make and then you know then sort of figure out how to how to make it because yeah because you haven't worked in augmented reality before so um do you think it's something that you would continue um you know continue with exploring um as part of your practice and um yeah and how is it sort of different to photography which is kind of what you're sort of more familiar with yeah I think classical you know or more traditional ideas of photography because this is yeah yeah I think it's it's definitely something I want to explore more I think now I've sort of got a a good foundation of like how it sort of works Mm. I think I can see ways that I'd like to use it in the future Mm. which is good like I think when you're first learning something you don't really know the scope of it and it's hard to like visualize what you can actually do like but but yeah it's definitely something I want to try more of and then in terms of photography I think I think the main thing is the like the the depth of it because photography you sort of have an idea you take the photo and then you've got like this one thing it's quite static and still and like it is it's just there but then with AR it sort of has more it has more of a life to it like it's got more movement you can walk around it it's a lot more immersive as well Mm. it's sort of full of all of these like different aspects of different things just a lot more I think (laughs) and and what what do you think the biggest challenge was uh, that you faced sort of like throughout this kind of process I think just all of all of the technical things <laughs> it was a big learning curve but like I had a lot of help from the collabor- collaborators that I worked with yeah. and also YouTube YouTube is really helpful and just tutorials but it's it's the little things you don't realize like file size <laughs> like you've got so like I'd make I'd make a plant and then we'd we'd animate it but then it's it's too massive for the app for adobe aero and it crashes and then you've got to go back and forth and it's just it's a lot of like tweaking things i think sort of seeing seeing what works making it smaller trying it again yeah it's <laughs> like time consuming as well yeah but you got there and it's a fantastic piece um is there some sort of um final notes just to so also to let the audience know we'll be playing a sort of walkthrough of the experience um but it's also available online at the photographer's gallery um website and you can kind of click to click through and download the app to um experience the artwork um but yeah George would you like to maybe is there some final thoughts that you'd like to to add or share no just thanks <laughs> thanks yeah. for listening I guess but yeah so it's like a it's a download link and then it it takes you to uh the Adobe Aero app and then on any phone really it should be fine um but yeah and then people can experience the the card and the Bella one yeah wherever yeah. wherever they are at home or uh out out and about um very cool well thank you so much for chatting to me today um and yeah it's been a real treat to see the project bloom should i say and um <laughs> and you. yeah um i hope you all enjoy it at home um 
and yeah thank you for joining us and uh, yeah hope to hope to see you soon take care thank you bye, bye. bye. thank you georgia